Josh. I've waited a very long time to do this review. This is Amazon Prime's Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power season two. It's been two years since the last season. Uh, a billion dollar fantasy production uh, made by Amazon. And uh, the one question, did it pay off? Is it worth watching? Well, I'm here to talk a little bit about the second season because it just finally uh, finished up. The finale just came out the other day. And um, I have I have some concerns. I have some issues. I, I'm supposed to be excited. I'm supposed to be ecstatic because if anything, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And so you have to understand that I come in with this, sh I come into the show with a, a lot of just critical eye and uh, observation. Things that, you know, where the showrunners have a lot of creative liberty to perhaps change a lot of Tolkien's literature, the events, the characters, to the point that it, it comes off as deliberate retcon. And here's the thing about retconning in any franchise. If you're gonna do it, you better justify it. Does the show do it? Does the show justify these retcons? I don't think so. Does the show have any proper payoffs by the end of the show? To some extent, yes, but it just takes far too long to get there to the point that when it does happen, it feels underwhelming. And that is really ultimately the feeling I got even after watching the second season. The first season had a lot of problems. And one of them was that it, it was too boring. It got, it, it was going absolutely nowhere. And this show, at this season at least, there is some development. And the biggest one that everyone's really, any fan or any viewer that is tuning in to watch the second season is the Sauron and Celebrimbor subplot. The making of the Rings of Power. This is perhaps the strongest subplot in the show. And that says something because the rest of the subplots are very uninteresting. They're weak, they're slow, they're stretched to death to the point that it's intolerable. I don't care what the payoff is for any of those subplots by the end of the show. And that's a big problem, especially now with two seasons. 16 episodes this is 16 hours of television and the show still continues to feel underwhelming this is a shame because there is an underlying problem now with what you know any viewer who tunes into to the show has is that where is this exactly going and am i actually going to enjoy what comes next and the, the problem that I have with the show, even as I was watching the episodes, is that I noticed something very strange. There has been a lot of moments, dialogues and scenes and just character moments that feel like it directly rips off from uh, the Peter Jackson movie trilogy. Now, I don't mind if you take some inspiration, that's fine. But when you take literally word for word dialogues and have them being said on your show, it feels it, it feels like you, do, you as a writer, you as a showrunner, don't have, it feels like you're creatively bankrupt, that you have to take from something better just so that you can imitate what the, imitate the magical moments of, you know, uh, of, of, of what came before. And I saw this a lot in the show to the point that it was extremely distracting. It took me out of it multiple times. And it, this is where I, I had an epiphany with the series is what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at is not a, uh, a, a an attempt to make an adaptation of Tolkien's literary work. It was a poor imitation of it to the point that what I'm looking at is is nothing more than fan fiction. This is what this show really feels like. The show ultimately feels nothing more than a creatively bankrupt piece of fan fiction. A poorly written fan fiction at that. Even the, the final battle of se the second season literally takes, it literally rips off from the Battle of Helm's Deep from Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. And this is what I'm talking about. There's nothing about what this show is doing is original. It rips off, it takes inspiration, and it imitates it in a poorly manner. Everything about character development for some of the most iconic characters, poorly written. 
Everything about the events that are taking place here, they're retconned to death and don't justify the retcon. And the world building for, this is the this is Tolkien's Middle Earth. It's supposed to feel epic and grandiose and large and vast, but they feel so small in the show. And it's all these culminating problems that ultimately make the Rings of Power season two still underwhelming. And now if you're someone who likes the show and it resonates with you, I'm glad that you can find something to like, really. Um, and that's that's a great thing. But as someone who has, you know, has to compare it to the source material and into and to better adaptations, the likes of Peter Jackson, it becomes very hard for me to immerse myself. You know, the illusion breaks really fast when I start to see uh, problems with the writing, problems with character choices, the problem with world design. There's just a lot of spectacle in the show visually great spectacles but with not much substance and i think that's really the underlying problem with the rings of power season two so ultimately how do i what is my final verdict honestly i'm gonna give it a generous three out of ten i'm telling you i'm being generous here uh rings of power season two even till the very end feels underwhelming and i honestly have come to the conclusion that what i'm watching is not a respectable adaptation of Tolkien's literary work. It is nothing more than just fan fiction. Poorly written fan fiction at that. And that pretty much concludes my review for The Rings of Power Season 2. If you've gotten the chance to watch it, do let me know. Hit me up. Show me, uh, share with me your personal opinions and thoughts and critique.